In Australia's far north, even these troublesome saltwater crocodiles have a home, as efforts to conserve the reptiles pay off. Jess Grills helps tourists get up close to the creatures at this park near Darwin. We have got 47 of them in this river. A majority of them, again, are wild caught, so they've all been problematic out the wild, causing grief, too close to human life. Some of them were cattle leaders, so they've all just been taken out of the wild, brought into parks like this. They do come in here to paradise. They get fed on a daily basis. But people and crocs weren't always happy neighbours. In the 20th century, the creatures were driven to the brink of extinction. When the, the demand for their skin to make fashion leather came up, everyone thought that was great. They could get rid of the crocodiles and get paid to do it. So it was a win-win situation. It wasn't until the 1960s that people were starting to realise that crocodiles were being depleted all over the place in the wild. We estimate the population had been reduced by like 98% or something. There, there were maybe 3,000 animals left, but of that, probably less than 500 adults. After government protections in the 1970s, crocodile numbers began to rise, but so did attacks. Croc expert Graham Webb says crocodile tourism, the harvesting of wild eggs for use in leather farms, and blunt messaging on safety have helped prevent culls, allowing numbers to soar. But it's been really a raging success story. Now when we look back, our populations are almost fully recovered, if not fully recovered. There's maybe 100,000 crocodiles now. It's about $100 million a year in turnover, you know, with everybody. It, it extends out into Aboriginal communities and it helps the tourist industry here. So we've made them an asset to the Northern Territory rather than a liability. With crocodile populations returning to pristine levels, a key hurdle for the region now is to avoid complacency around the dangers of crocodiles and their habitats. The biggest challenge is to maintain that public support for very large numbers of saltwater crocodiles. And as I said, like in 1979, when I started working with crocodiles, there were very few large ones. Now the population is dominated by large crocodiles and they're the ones that cause the problems you know, with, with people. For grills, admiring the hulking predators up close builds respect and ensures a balance between the scaly locals and their potential human prey. I was in mining and then I was a mother and now I'm a crop keeper. Because crocodiles do look at humans as a food source, they do seem terrifying, but if you respect them and their territory, I don't think that they would, you know, be as terrifying. I don't think that they've got a very bad rap with their name, which I think is very unfair on them because, you know, at the end of the day, they've been here for millions of years and we've been here for not as much.